Are you trying to use a front door? Who do you think you are? I shuddered to hear the voice of my mother-in-law. It was not the first time she had spoken to me like that. Ever since I got married and moved in with her, I had to endure her verbal abuse day in and day out. That day, her bullying didn't stop. People like you should use only the back door. Wait. I regret your dog house. You can't live in it. Please, Kathy, you can't be serious. I don't like it when you call me by my first name. It gives me the chills. You and I are like mistress and servant, get it? If I tell you to eat a piece of trash on the street, you put it in your mouth? No way. Go and take care of the garden now. It's colder than usual today, but a sleeve would be more than enough for you to wear. I won't allow you to come inside until it's clean. I began to tend to the garden as she ordered me to do. It was sub-zero outside. My arms and legs were shivering. My cheeks ached from the north wind. My whole body was shaking so badly, and my consciousness was fading. I can't take it anymore. Just when I was about to faint. Hey, are you okay? A warm voice I hadn't heard in a while echoed in my ears. My name is Lauren. My life in hell began with the passing of my mother. Mom. As she lay in bed, she didn't answer my call anymore. The sudden stroke was discovered too late. In the best room and as the hospital could not save her. She was 48 years old. She died too young. I heard people around me whispering that she must have been overworked. She raised me as a single mother. My father walked out on her shortly after I was born. I never knew where he was or if he was even alive. My mother worked several jobs to give me the best education she could afford. I always wanted to repay her for her hard work. So I studied hard and got a good job at a major telecommunications company. I worked hard for three years. When I was finally able to support her financially, I met Nathan, who later became my husband. We worked in different departments of the same company. He was one of the best salesmen, always bringing in results. When he approached me, I immediately fell for him. His success at work was appealing, but more than that, I was attracted by his sweetness. I had been somewhat distrustful of men because of my father, but he dispelled my prejudice. Let's get married. When he mentioned it, I agreed in a heartbeat. I was in love with him, and my mother had been waiting for us to get married for a long time. She wholeheartedly wished me the happiness she couldn't have for herself. She always told me so. The process went very quickly, and within a month of the proposal, we were resigned as Mary. When we only had to wait for the wedding two months later, she suddenly passed away. I was devastated. She was my only family. My despair was deep, remembering how we had supported each other throughout our life. Of course, I cancelled the wedding, and instead, I prepared for her funeral. I couldn't help but feel sorry for Nathan. He was very concerned about me and told me not to worry about it. Another person who saved me was my mother-in-law, Kathy. She had been attentive to us since before we were married. She had a gentle personality and was a flower arrangement teacher. She also lost her husband only in life and experienced raising Nathan as a single parent. My mother's passing wasn't just someone else's problem to her. When I was shedding tears in front of the coffin, she gently spoke to me. Don't cry, dear. Losing your mother is indeed terrible, but you are not alone. You have Nathan and me. But I were in the wedding. That's just a formality. The important thing is that we are now a family. You can count on me. I can't replace your mother. But that doesn't change the way I feel about you. Thank you. Her kind words made me wail on her shoulder. Her gentle arms wrapped around me. 
I never imagined that the same person would later torment me. When the funeral was over, I was finally ready to move forward. Nathan and I moved in with Kathy after she enthusiastically invited us to live with her. Nathan saw that I would feel safer if we lived with someone else. When we got married, I quit my job. He was a frequent business traveler, so he felt better living me with her while he was away. I did not object either. I had made up my mind to deport myself to her to make up for the loss of my mother. However, my intentions were soon trampled upon. Lauren, you don't even know how to make chicken soup? She harshly criticized the meals I prepared. They were badly seasoned and looked messy. When I served her a greasy meal, she lifts the table without tasting a single bite. Are you trying to kill me too, by serving me lousy food? I was totally taken aback. It was unthinkable from the kindness she had shown me up to that point. She had always been sweet to me until we moved in with her. When I was depressed, she did her best to comfort me. Her attitude changed completely as soon as we started living together. She was a perfect example of a bully. She criticized me about everything from the way I cleaned the house and the way I greeted the neighbors to even the smallest details for how I should act in our neighborhood. She didn't even stop there. Whenever I behaved in a way she didn't like, she punished me for it. It's such a shame that you can't even clean the house properly. I'm so disappointed to have an incapable daughter-in-law. I'm sorry. Do you know why I asked you to move in with me? Because I wanted someone to take care of me. Someone to do the housework for me. Then I could work more freely. And yet, I'm doing my best on cooking, cleaning, laundry, and everything else. I'm trying to make sure that I don't interfere with your work. I'm telling you that you're a total failure. What has your mother taught you? Or did she just hang around outside leaving you alone? My mother was not like that at all. She raised me by herself and never had time for herself. How dare you talk back to me? I know that hardship better than anyone else. I will tell you what, your mother was incompetent. Isn't that right? Because she raised a pathetic daughter like you. How could you say that? You need to be re-educated. As punishment, skip dinner tonight. Of course you will cook for me. If you even try to taste it, I will throw you out of the house. She often tortured me in this way, calling it education. I was not allowed to eat. I was not allowed to take a shower. When I was not allowed to sleep for a night as punishment for not cleaning well enough, it was really hard for me. I spent the whole night in the dark kitchen, fighting out sleepiness. I was forced to write a letter of apology to her. I had to write, I'm sorry for my incompetence, dozens of times. I couldn't contain my tears from dropping on the paper. Even so, I never thought to tell Nathan about the mistreatments. To begin with, he was away on business trips so often that he was not home for half the month. When he did come home, it was usually well past midnight. I knew that his job was very demanding and that he worked hard for us. I couldn't let him worry about unnecessary things. Besides, he trusted her with all his heart. I didn't know if he believed me if I told him. And so, that days of torture went on for a month. The trip is going to be a bit longer than usual. As Nathan was leaving, he said in a formal tone. He was entrusted with a big project, and the trip was going to decide his future promotion. You would be okay as always? Sure. What's the matter? You look a little pale. You seem to have lost some weight too. It's nothing. I just haven't been sleeping well. It's getting colder these days. Take care of yourself. And take care of my mom too. Have a safe trip? I saw him off with a forced smile. How could I confide in him about my trouble? He was in the most critical time of his career. 
I didn't want to bother him about me. Kathy's bullying became limitless without his presence. That day, she ordered me to do something outrageous. It was a chilly winter afternoon. Even though the sun was shining, clean up the garden today. It has been neglected all autumn. It's a complete mess up there. I don't know much about gardens. I don't know which plants should be kept and which ones to be cut away. I'd rather have a professional take care of it. Are you trying to make me spend money? You're just looking for an easy way out. If you don't know what to do, look it up on your phone. If you do anything wrong, I will punish you again. Understood? Her fierceness pushed me reluctantly to go down to the garden. It was a large space, and even in winter, it had varieties of plants. I pulled out what I thought were weeds and gathered dead leaves. I was wearing garden gloves, but my hands were numb from the cold. My breath was white, and I felt my ears freezing. I was up my limit after two hours. I appealed to Kathy, who was just waiting inside the warm house. Kathy, I'm freezing. I can't move my hands anymore. Can I do the rest tomorrow? The garden is too big. What a lazy girl you are! It's embarrassing to my guests if the garden is left messy. I really can't take it anymore. The soil is cold. The air is freezing. I'm going to get sick. Then keep doing that until you collapse. Until your limbs freeze. Oh, I just got a good idea. Take off your clothes. What? No. A girl like you has no right to wear clothes. Under real will suffice. You will clean the garden almost naked. Don't forget to dig up the soil. You can't be serious. I'm really going to die. I'm freezing even now. You can see your mother again if you really die. After making me take off my clothes, she slammed all the windows in the house and carefully locked them. I could do anything but stand there in disbelief. Even for a bully, that was way out of the line. She had even mocked my mother's death. I felt more sadness than anger, but soon, I was overwhelmed by the piercing cold. That icy wind blew mercilessly against my bare shoulders and legs. I felt nauseous and fell to the ground. But the soil was also cold. There was no way I could tend to the garden in this condition. I couldn't even go out to the street in just my underwear. I didn't want my neighbors to see me. I was more concerned about the appearance than the danger to myself. Kathy's relentless abuse had brainwashed me. I was incapable of making normal human judgments and was reduced to a slave who obeyed her orders. As the sun went down, the cold outside became increasingly severe. The evening passed and night fell. I was still not allowed in the house and sat in a corner of the garden, losing the energy to even shiver. I put my hand on my shoulder, which was probably turning pale. I realized that I had lost all feeling in my hands. My head was starting to get foggy. I called out to my mother, and finally collapsed to the ground. I didn't know how long I had been out. When I gained consciousness, I saw Nathan's face in front of me. It seems that he was holding me in his arms. That temperature of his hand faintly warmed my skin. My frozen lips barely moved. Honey. What are you doing outside? You're almost naked. What about your business trip? Your important work? I will get to that later. I've got to get you inside. He picked me up and walked to the patio door. He was surprised to find it bolted from the inside. He checks the windows and was stunned that they were all locked too. I didn't have the energy to tell him what Kathy did. He went to bang on the front door two or three times, but no one came to open it. Then he picked up a stone and slammed it hard against the sliding window in the living room. The piercing sound of breaking glass echoed in the garden. He stuck his hand through the crack and unlocked it. Finally, I was inside the warmth of the house. What's going on, Kathy? 
who seems to have been taking a bath came running. She was wearing a bathrobe over her naked body. Even so, she looked warmer than I was. When Nathan banged on the door, she couldn't hear him in the bathroom. She gasped at the sight of scattered glasses. Mom, what's going on? What do you mean? Lauren was on the bars of hypersemia. She was naked in our backyard while you were warm and cozy in the bathtub. I just asked her to clean up the garden. I knew something was up. She was getting thinner by the day and even this morning she looks exhausted. She often has dark socks under her eyes like she's not sleeping. I noticed these things every time I come back from my trip. I could only assume that something's happening at home. Is that why you came back early? I lied that it was a long trip and wanted to see what was going on. I went to work as usual and decided to leave on time today. Then I came back to my wife collapsed naked outside. You have been tormenting her. I could understand what he was saying, even in my foggy consciousness. He was trying to help me. He sensed something unusual in our daily life. To make sure, he faked a business trip and came back to check on us. Sure enough, he came up on the scene of me being tortured by Kathy. I was so careless. I didn't know you were bullying her. This is education. She is an incompetent wife. Who is stalking? You are the one who can't do a damn thing. A flower arrangement or whatever. You've always been doing what you want. You rarely cooked for me since I was a child. I was forced to take care of myself. Well, that, and now, you became a bully. No, this is worse than that. You almost killed a person. You are exaggerating. First of all, it was her fault for being slow cleaning the garden. And shut up. I don't consider you as my mother for harming my life. Get out of here immediately. I don't want to see you. Nathan. You should go outside in that gown. You will see for yourself how cold she was. He grabbed her arm and forced her outside. No. She screamed and rushed into the house, unable to stand that cold for even a second. Then, she ran upstairs to her room. He stood there grimacing at her until she was out of sight. Honey, let's get you in the hot bath. As soon as she was gone, he immediately took me in his arms once again. I saw tears welling up in his eyes. I'm so sorry. I didn't realize the suffering you were going through until today. Oh, hon. We will leave this house tomorrow. We will stay in a hotel until we find a new place to live. I'm not going to see my mom ever again. She's your mother. You don't care about that? Who does? You're the most important person in my life. You were so concerned about me that you couldn't tell me what was going on. Well, I promise to protect you from now on, and we'll have a happy home together. Being held firmly by him, I felt a lump that was frozen inside of me finally melt away. I sobbed into his chest. When he helped me into the bath, I felt my heart warm up to the core. Then, as he declared, we moved out the next day. We left our belongings behind for the time being, and scanned the hotel while we looked for a new place. We found an apartment right away, and were able to move in a week later. When we returned to pick up our belongings, Kathy pleaded with me. Hey, can we just forget the past and move on? I regret that I went a little too far. Forget? You mean forget about you leaving me outside naked? I apologize, that was suddenly too much. And about me taking a bath, kind of forgetting about you. That wasn't the only time you mistreated me. I'm not going to forget about you making me starve, or making me write an apology letter. The window is still broken. I haven't had a proper meal without you. The house is a mess, so I can't even invite my students. I don't care, and I got nothing to do with it. Why don't you clean it yourself? You seem to still care about your reputation. 
but I've told the neighbors what you have done to me. I took pictures of a broken window and sent them to the right people. I also have a copy of apology letter I was forced to write. Why did you do that? It's going to be very difficult to keep your head high in the neighborhood from now on. And your classes. I hope there still are students who want to learn from a teacher whose hobby is to bully people. I turned my back to her after saying all I wanted. She fell to her knees and couldn't say anything other than, Oh no, oh no. I felt somewhat relieved, finished my business quickly, and returned to my new apartment. There, I was starting a new life with Nathan. I hoped to create a loving home 